promised you yesterday we have one more book about deserts. And this one is just called Deserts. It talks about a lot of the same plants and animals and weather patterns that we have already mentioned in our book Cactus Hotel and Cat in the Hat, Why Are Deserts So Dry? So let's see how many of those things you remember and how many of those things you recognize when we read this book together. This book is written by Gail Gibbons. There's a picture. You can maybe recognize some of those plants and animals that we've already talked about. Dry ground, bright sunshine. It is hot and the sky is clear. Because remember, there's no clouds. It is daytime on the desert. A desert is a place that is very dry. In most deserts, it rains less than 10 inches a year. That's not very much rain at all. 10 inches in a whole year. This is about one inch. So about 10 inches in one whole year. Scientists believe most deserts are up to a few thousand years old. So they're very old. It's taken a lot of time for the wind to whip those sand, the sand into dunes and ripples and patterns and the rocks to be worn away with holes in them. Where they are formed, the climate or the weather slowly changed from being cool and wet to warm and dry. Desert, deserts cover one fifth of the land's surface. So if you had a pie and you cut it into five pieces and you ate one piece, that piece that you ate would be about how much space that deserts take up of the globe. So if we pretended the globe was flat and cut it into five pieces and took one of those pieces away, that piece that we took away is about how much space the deserts take up in the whole globe. Most dry, hot deserts are near the equator. And we've mentioned that before when we were doing our map studies, that the warm places are closer to the equator. So it makes sense that deserts, most of them, would be closer to the equator. Except for those ones we talked about where there's ice and snow, like the Antarctica. That definitely is not near the equator. Winds bring dry and cloudless days. When the sun is high in the sky, the temperature can be well over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, we don't get temperatures like that here very often, or 38 degrees Celsius. When the sun sets, the temperature drops sharply. It gets cool at night. There is no cloud cover to hold in the heat. Deserts can be sandy or rocky. About one-fifth of all deserts are sandy. Over many years, wind and other elements wore away and broke down rocks into tiny grains of sand. Sandy deserts can look different. Some sandy desert floors look like rippled water. Wind blows the sand, changing its appearance. Others look uneven and bumpy. If something is in the sand's way, sand piles up behind it. On some sandy deserts, strong winds blow the sand into smooth hills called dunes. Over time, dunes can move. So here's some different deserts. Here's a, a sandy desert. Here's a rippled desert. Here's a rocky desert. And here's a desert with dunes. It all depends on how the wind has blown the sand or the rocks. Rocky deserts can look different and very strange. Often wind-blown sand wears rocks into odd shape. Many deserts have jagged rocks. Sudden rains along with heat and cold crack the rocks and break pieces away. So, after many years of the sand and the wind blowing over the rocks, it wears them down into different shapes. And sometimes the contrast of the heat during the day and the cold at night uh, creates cracks in the rocks and pieces fall off. So there's a rocky desert with the different shapes that have been created over the many years by the sand and the wind and the heat and the cold.
<coughs> Often the rain falls hard and fast. It runs off and sinks into the ground or evaporates. So they don't get the rain very often, but when it comes, it comes hard and fast, but it doesn't stay very long because the heat evaporates the water back up into the air. Or it sinks way, way down below, some of it. Few plants and animals can live in the desert because it's so hot and dry. The ones that do live there have adapted to living without much water. Many plants that live in the desert are called succulents. They take rainwater up through their roots to store in their leaves or stems for use during dry, hot spells. And there's some of those plants and animals that have adapted to the harsh, dry, hot conditions of the desert. Here's the Seguro cactus right there. We know it's been growing for a while because it has two arms on it and it's getting pretty tall. A cactus is a succulent desert plant. The waxy surface on the stem helps keep in the water. Some have pleats that allow the cactus to expand with water when it rains. The cactus puffs up and the pleats almost disappear. As it uses up its water, the pleats become more visible again. Most cactus plants have thorns, also called spines. These protect the plant from hungry animals. They also break up the hot desert wind and shade the branches and stems from intense sunlight. Here's a skinnier cactus and a fatter cactus. The fat ones have soaked up a lot of water. Desert plants need to get as much water as possible to survive. Some grow deep tap roots. We talked about that. Some of the roots go down very deep and some of them spread out wide to, to get as much water as possible quickly when it does rain. Many desert plants dry up and wither during the hottest part of the year. But the water that they have stored in their underground roots, tubers, and bulbs is usually enough to keep them alive until the next time rain falls again. So here's a buffalo gourd, and it has a tuber underneath the ground, that big bulb, and with lots of roots coming out of it. So it can store water in there. At the top it looks dry and dead, but it can store enough water in there until it rains again, and then it can soak up some more. In some deserts, when it finally does rain, parts of the desert can be covered in desert flowers. They have grown from seeds that may have been lying there for many years waiting for water. These seeds grow into plants when there is just the right amount of rain at the right time of year. And you can see how the desert is transformed from being dry and brown to bright and beautiful. It doesn't last for very long though. Desert flowers bloom for just a short time. Insects drink nectar from them. Pollination happens when insects spread pollen from one flower to another. This process allows the flowers to make new seeds that drop to the ground that will wait for a long time for the next big rainfall. Those seeds will grow and flower another time. Night is the time when both insects, birds, and other animals become active in the desert. The starlit sky is clear and the air is cooler. The creatures begin to move about. A honey pot ant stores nectar in its body. A pinniket beetle creeps around on the desert floor. A golden wheel spider folds up its legs and then can cartwheel down the sand dune to escape anything that bothers it. A scorpion is busy hunting for insects and other small animals in the sand. It kills its food with a poisonous stinger in its tail. So here's the honeypot ant that we talked about with Dr. Seuss. Here's a beetle. 
And here's the golden wheel spider. He's kind of interesting how he cartwheels down the sand dune to escape his predators. And there's the scorpion that stings its prey with its stinger. Lizards and snakes move along the desert floor where they stay cooler. They stay low. The gecko lizard flicks its stingy tongue to catch insects. The fringe toed lizard can dig itself into the sand for protection within seconds to escape its enemies. The horned lizard is covered with sharp points for protection. The Gila monster is a big poisonous lizard. So here's all these different types of lizards that can survive in the desert. Here's the gecko lizard, the fringe toed lizard. Those fringe toes help him to be able to dig in the sand and escape his enemies. Here is the Gila monster. That's a great big lizard. Here's the horned lizard. He's tiny, but he has those horns that help him and protect him from his enemies. Some desert snakes are dangerous. They hunt mice, lizards, birds, and other small animals. Some bite with a poisonous venom and swallow their prey. A sidewinder side rattlesnake slithers sideways across the sand. Its body leaves wavy marks behind. The inland taipan is the most poisonous snake in the world. So here's some of those desert snakes. And here's the sidewinder rattlesnake who goes sideways across the sand. This past summer, my family and I were in Arizona and Arizona is a desert. And there's many of those rock formations. We went to see the Grand Canyon when we were there. And it has been developing and it's been worn down and formations have been uh, created over many, many thousands of years from the wind and the sand. And we went uh, camping a lot when we were there in Arizona. And one time we went camping and we hiked out a long dis distance into a, a sandy area. And we did see a sign that said rattlesnakes um, live here. But we didn't see any rattlesnakes when we were camping there. So that's a good thing. Some desert birds live in cactus plants. Sometimes pairs of Gila woodpeckers nest inside a tall saguru cactus. When they abandon or leave the nest, other birds, such as the elf owl, moves in. Vultures are very big desert birds. They live off dead animals. They are scavengers and they help keep the desert clean. So it might sound like they're not a very nice bird. They eat dead animals, but that actually um, does something that's good and valuable for the desert because it keeps it clean. The road runner is a very fast desert bird. If you've ever watched the show Bugs Bunny, I, I used to watch that when I was a little girl. There was a bird on the Bugs Bunny show called the road runner bird. And he was always running really, really fast to escape the coyote. Well, there really is a bird in the desert called the roadrunner bird, and he does run very fast. It runs quickly to catch insects, lizards, and snakes. It hardly ever flies. The roadrunner can run as fast as 23 miles an hour. That's pretty fast. That would be like a very slow moving car. Other desert creatures move about. A kangaroo rat is a small animal that is about a foot long. It can jump 10 feet at a time. So even though it's a very small rat, it can jump very high. It eats mostly seeds. So this is that rat we were talking about that eats seeds and it doesn't drink any water, but it gets its moisture from inside those seeds it eats. A jackrabbit doesn't need to drink much water. It gets most of its water from the plants that it eats. A jackrabbit can leap 15 feet at a time. And it has those big ears. And the fennec fox, we also spoke about, has those big ears. And they help to keep the heat off of them and radiate outwards. So here's 
the kangaroo rat that eats the seeds for moisture. Here's the jackrabbit that has the big ears and eats plants for moisture. And here's the fennec fox with the furry feet to protect his feet from the hot sand and the big ears to radiate the sun away from him. Desert creatures have to watch out for coyotes. Most of the animals in the desert aren't very big because it's hard for big animals to survive when there's not much moisture and it's a harsh environment. But one of the bigger animals that is in the desert and is um, a predator for all, a lot of the smaller ones is the coyote. They look a lot like a dog with a bushy tail. Coyotes bark, howl, and whimper to communicate with other coyotes. So those noises that you might hear um, sometimes if you live out in the country and there's coyotes is are the coyotes talking to each other those howls at night the coyotes howls sound lonely desert skunks eat almost anything many deserts are home for badger ground squirrel bobcats and many other animals most of them are small there isn't enough food and water in the desert for large wild animals to survive some people do live in the desert. They live in groups called tribes. Some tribes are nomadic. This means they move from one place to another, often carrying and trading goods. They might travel from oasis to oasis. And if you recall from our Cat in the Hat book, an oasis is a place in the desert where there are trees, plants, and water. There are not very many oases, but there are a few there, and these nomadic people travel on their camels from oasis to oasis, trading goods. And there's a picture of the man that lives in the desert, traveling on his camel, trying to find an oasis where he can sell the goods that he has to make some money. Desert people live in harsh conditions. Some wear special clothing to protect them from the sun and the sand. And we said their clothing needs to be loose and light and they need to have protection over their mouth so the sand doesn't get in their mouth and on their head to protect them from the sun and so the sand doesn't get in their hair. And those, the clothing that they wear is called a burnous. Some use camels to get around. Their wide feet, the wide feet of the camel, allows them to walk over the soft desert without sinking in. So the camel has some parts of its body that help protect it and enable it to live in the desert. One is its wide feet. Another is its long eyelashes that help keep the sun out of its eyes. And it has very thin eyelids so that it can close its eyes if it needs to, to protect it from the sun and sand, but it could still see through its eyelids. Isn't that cool? If we close our eyelids, we can't see through them, but the camel can. They can shut their nostrils as well. Can you shut your nostrils? I can't. But the camels can shut their nostrils to keep the sand out. Camels can go for days without food and water, and we certainly can't go for days without food and water. But if you remember, we said that the camels store fat in their humps. And that gives them the nutrition they need until they can find a drink. But they can go for a whole week long without drinking. And they can drink 30 gallons at one time. They can also carry heavy loads on their backs. So that's why many of the nomad um, travelers use the camels to get around and they can carry their goods on their backs. And there's the dromedary camel with one hump. And there's the Bactrian camel with two humps. Many natural resources, those are the things that they might trade, things that they can sell to um, get money, that have been found in the desert, such as oil, gas, nickel, sodium nitrate, gold, and diamonds have all been found in the desert. 
Deserts have some of the most interesting landscapes in the whole world. These hot, rocky, and sandy places are home to many plants and animals. Deserts are alive with mystery and beauty. And there's a picture, again, of the beautiful desert when everything has come to life. Well, I hope you've learned many interesting facts about deserts. It's one type of climate and geographical area on our globe that is very interesting. And we have a very creative God who's made many different landscapes. Can you remember some of the different deserts? Can you remember some of the different plants and animals? Maybe with your mom or dad, you could talk about some of the interesting facts you've learned about deserts and watch a video, draw some pictures of some of the desert plants and animals and some of the facts that you've learned about deserts.